Wow, oh, it's been a while since we've seen one of these, hasn't it? Hello everyone, welcome back to Regrowth. I was running a little bit short on sugarcane and wheat, so I decided to make one last farm with our new friend, Colum the Golem. Very nice, lovely name. I also filled out some of these witchery plants. I've got Snowbell, Water Artichoke, Mandrake, Belladonna, Wormwood, and note the wispy cotton here so it can grow. Just some regular brown mushrooms, carrots, and potatoes as well. And also more wheat because when I turn on the ethanol machine, it eats up the wheat. Anyway, this is the second take of this because OBS has failed me yet again. Uh, between episodes, all I did was I... I, um, I, I played around with the Millionaire Villages a little bit. They are still kind of, like... I'll come around and show you, um... Yeah, the little Hamlet Industrie is, is kind of... It's progressing. The buildings are all, like, stone. The quarry is, like, actually a quarry. But it hasn't grown up any bigger. And it's kind of plateaued in production because... They need this special wood frame stuff that apparently they can't produce themselves. So I went and I made a second village. This agricole here. And they are... It, it, uh, it turns out the first village I made is a hamlet, which is the smallest type of village. This is a larger village and they're still growing. But you notice that, um, yeah, they have a lot of stuff. This is their town hall here. And this building, I think, will produce the wood framing stuff it needs. But they haven't yet bred any more villagers to actually populate it yet. Which is... crappy. Anyway. That is what happened between episodes. In the first take of this episode, I started it as I tend to by uh, attempting to by um, by recruiting another coven witch. Yes, the coven witch I got. Her task was simply to fight her pet. It turned out just to be a vanilla spider with one hundred health. And it was, the battle was over in two seconds. I think these witches are getting progressively easier. So yes, she was Samantha Graveson. I, okay, this is, this is weird. Um, if I turn on my chat, the Seer Stone says I only have three witches. Oh, and it actually acknowledges send your hoodles now. But it summons four. So that's weird. They will just disappear after a little while. Don't mind them. The other thing I did is I played around with this magic mirror. You notice that this one says hollow? Yeah. I did a couple of quests with it. First of all, I got us these duplication grenades. These things are really, really easy. All you need is these quartz spheres, which are just made out of essentially a bunch of quartz. And I'm just going to find a place to put this mirror. Over here should be fine. Yes. You notice that it actually is a reflective type of mirror. You see a, a blurry image in it when you're standing in front of it. And if you take these quartz spheres... Dung. Oh, I'm out of range of the altar. It also requires some altar power. That's okay. I happen to know that this pillar here is in range. It goes dung and gets you these duplication grenades at the cost of a couple thousand altar points. These duplication grenades make a sexy distraction, although not as sexy as he could be. I mean, come on. Who can deny the invisible helmet? 
Yeah, you're 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 taller just because you're wearing the helmet. Mm. This sexiness cannot be denied. The other thing you can do is if you place them down near a vanilla village, it will have a chance of spawning a fairest of them all. And if you kill them, you get some special potion brewing ingredients. But the final and most interesting thing you can do is you can jump on in there and have the sexiest battle of all time. My god, he's too beautiful. Except he's wearing the helmet, so he must die. Yep. Yeah. I think if I, if I take my own helmet off, actually, I'll be able to see that it is, in fact, a clone of me. Yeah. Except he wears whatever armor you are wearing. He wields whatever weapon you are wielding. He just has a lot less health and is a lot stupider. And also you get this mutual slow effect, and his reach isn't quite as long. So he's not hard to beat. Yep. And you notice that he drops a demon heart, and that's because he is that demon that we trapped in here. He just got a much nicer makeover. And that was one of the quests that I did on screen. Now that the mirror is cleared out, it actually has a couple interesting uses, some of which I can only show off now that I have two hollow mirrors. So first of all, you notice that we can just jump right on back out of it and we're fine. I think we could only jump out once we killed the reflection. But when we're inside the mirror, well, I put down this demon art. You see, I... I that's just the only place of a block I happen to have on me. Now, if I jump back out again, I can pick up the mirror. And I can put it any old other place I want. And inside the mirror... All the blocks will still be in place. And it is, in fact, possible to get a whole ton of these mirrors. And I can line the walls with them... And if I place an altar in here and give it a little bit of juice, then those mirrors will actually create new rooms. So I can create a huge complex of mirrors and make storage rooms and bedrooms and basically an entire base. And then I can just hop outside, pick up the entrance, and I will have a mobile base that I can take with me. Really neat. The other thing you can do with these mirrors is they can act as short-range teleporters. If I get my other hollow mirror, and yes, I think the mirrors have to be hollow to do this, and I just take some blocks. So, I place one mirror here. And one mirror here. And hopefully... If I walk into one, yep, I get teleported to the other. And that can also work vertically. If I were to build a big pillar up with a mirror at the base and a platform at the top with a mirror facing out the same way, I could use it as an elevator. Eh, why not? I'll show that off. There. Note that it's facing in the same way as the one on the base. But when I step in, when I step in, yep, I essentially have a teleporting elevator here. And of course, the final thing is when the mirror is inhabited, um, well, it has to be inhabited for you to make those duplication grenades. And those are actually mildly useful because they draw aggro. So you can use them to pull enemies if you're in trouble, you can throw down a bunch of them and you can use them as a distraction. Um, they have a couple of different uses. Um, and the mirror has to be inhabited for you to make those duplication grenades. I don't think a hollow mirror can do it. 
and also a a mirror can be used to change your appearance actually i forgot about that and i think a hollow mirror can do that too so as a quest reward i got this tag lock kit of the phoenix lodge and yeah, check this out oh yeah and i tried it with a couple of things it looks like it can only work with player skins though so if i take my mirror and i'm not sure if it needs to be inhabited so if I take a tag lock kit of someone, dunk, no, it has to be inhabited. Well, I need to make another inhabited mirror anyway, just because I'm going to um, need that for the fairest of them all, and that is another quest. So I need yet another mirror. Yeah, you can see why it's a good thing why you get so many brews of hollow tears for uh, flowing spirit. Because if you wanted to make really extensive use of mirrors, you would need quite a lot of it. I'm mildly proud of myself. I've actually memorized the recipe for summoning a demon. Okay, so that's barrier, that's demon, and glass, hollow tears, and gold is the mirror. I don't remember if any of these recipes require it to be nighttime, but... Oh yeah, that's another thing. Every so often, some of your coven just, like, shows up for a minute. No idea why. They go away after a while. Beria? Demon? Mirror? Zoomp. Yes. The inhabited mirror. Okay, so first of all, you can talk to it. Zoomp. Yeah. It tells you if there's anyone who's sexier than you. So of course it says no. Of course it hasn't seen anyone else. Not that there is anyone else. Anyway, now that the mirror is inhabited... I can take this tag lock kit. And I got this as a quest reward again for one of these quests. And if I dunk, yes, you hear that thump? Well, now, oh god, I am hideous. Why, god, why? Make it stop. Make it stop. Oh, thank God. So yeah, that can be fun for trolling. I don't know if it works for, like, things that are the size of a player. I don't know. Let's actually, let's, let's test that. Let's see if I can find a zombie. I know it doesn't work for things that aren't the size of a player. Like you saw that I tried to clone myself into Senor Hoodles there. Okay, so there's a zombie. And just for the sake of science, we won't kill that zombie. Go away. Nope, it failed. It's only other player skins. Well, we did a little bit of science. Anyway, I will keep that I will keep that inhabited mirror because I think what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to set up a vanilla style village and or just, you know, spawn a bunch of villagers with the wrath cage. And then I am going to have to try and like spam it to get one of them to turn into a fairest of them all for the quest. The other thing that I did in the first take is you might have noticed I have a new addition into my inventory, this Blood Magic Potion Flask. Yes, it turns out that there is a way to get creative level flight with Blood Magic. Let me just show you that real quick. I'm not going to remake the whole thing, but I'm just going to run down real quick how to make Blood Magic Potions. First, of course, you enchant a bottle with a little bit of blood. A zoop. Now, this potion flask is effectless, but 
if I take a catalyst for an effect and a binding agent, I can put effects on it with the alchemic chemistry set. In this case, I'm going to put a feather on it in order to grant it flight. But you notice that's only one minute. Well, what you need is something called a lengthening catalyst. I have one left. Well, I might as well use it. I think this is the only potion I'm going to make. Yes. And, and potions can have more than one effect. Like you see, this one has flight and something called soul harden. The effect of that is this, uh, this inscribed runic plate here, which you notice actually a master orb could not do. The lowest orb that could do this was the Archmage's orb, which is why I have an Archmage's orb sitting in here. Anyway, um, to, put, to put runic plate on that, I would just put a runic plate and a binding agent and the potion in here. But every effect you put on the potion, the chance gets higher and higher that the potion will blow up and you will lose all the ingredients you've invested into it. And the chance gets very high very quickly. So two, two effects is pretty much the most effects you're going to put on a potion. Once the effects are on, though, you are safe. And you can then soup up the effects as you wish using these lengthening and there's also power catalysts. So you just put in the catalyst and then you put the effect you would like at the point to. So like if, if I had the runic plate on here, like I would also need to put in another runic plate and another lengthening catalyst to get them both to 18 minutes. Well, 19 minutes, really. I'll just have this sitting in the in the uh as a backup there anyway the effects that i have here are creative level flight as i said zoom it's really really fast and actually 19 minutes is a good long time for it to last but also 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 that soul harden that i got from the runic plate that restores the classic effect of blood armor yeah, notice this? I can just sit here and I can tank this all day. And I do not give one good goddamn. It does still eat my runic shielding, unfortunately. So... That's unfortunate. But, I mean, I am tanky with this stuff on. I am not 100% invincible. But it's something like 99% damage reduction. It's pretty insane. And best of all, I still technically get hit, so my my effect from my wolf cape still procs. <laughs> but on top of that, I also get very, very fast flight, and both of the effects last a good long time. So this is a really good potion to have. And best of all, if I make these filling agents here, I can refill the potion bottle. And you see, it's not exactly hard to make. In fact, I'll make one right now. I need a redstone, a catalyst, a ward, and a glowstone. Yeah, notice it's essentially just a bunch of potion ingredients and a catalyst. This weak, this weak agent will refill two swigs. The stronger one will refill four, and the strongest will refill six. And my potion is missing two swigs, as it turns out, so... Just put it on there. Wait a second. Oh, that was only one. I'm sorry. Anyway, I can I can do that forever. There is no limit on how many times a potion flask can be refilled. So, yeah. Um, where I left off was I was just going to go downstairs and I was going to automate those, those filling agents so that I can have a stock of those and I can keep that potion flask full and I can have a new means of moving around and being freaking invincible. I will talk to you again in a minute once I've got that. If OBS hasn't screwed me over again. Ah, uh, yeah. The ritual room is getting nice and crowded. I like the way how spacing it like this, they kind of, they form a grid. It's very pretty. 
Anyway, I decided only to go up to this second level, the standard binding agent, which is just, or, or filling agent. That's just a regular plus some terai. And you see I have just the terai being formed over here. If I wanted to go all the way, I would need uh, both Magicalis and Aquasalis. Neither of which are particularly hard, but that would be three more frickin' rituals, and I would have to expand the room yet again. I've already had to expand it once. And then I would also have some channel juggling to do, and just... Anyway, I'm not sure if it's changed just for this pack, or if it was some sort of change to blood magic, but it looks like the base only does one, the uh, standard does two swigs, and I imagine this might do three. Anyway, oh yeah, also got our mirror evader. Might as well use it somewhere. Anyway, so I have those filling agents. I'll just have a stock of those at all times. I don't think I'm going to make some sort of like automated system for filling my potion at range, but I'll, I'll just keep it like, I'll keep the bottle full any time I'm about to go out somewhere, you know? Okay, so, let's do a quest. Let's do this demonic contract. Yeah. It's about time that I sold my soul to someone, you know? It's getting kind of grungy. Might as well trade it in. So, to make a demonic contract, I need just some paper and string and a raw pork chop. Uh, that's <laughs> an interesting pork chop. Yep. Okay. And then I need to sign it with my own blood, of course. Uh, well, wait, wait, wait. First of all, quest? Yes. Always check that quest. I've learned my lesson. Okay. So now I need I have to summon a fire imp and can, and uh, hand him this contract, and that will that will um, that will bind the fire imp to my service. So imp is the second red circle so i need to switch back to my main summoning circle but you see it's a relatively easy summoning i'd say it's actually even cheaper than the full demon which makes sense since a uh, fire imp is a lesser demon the only thing that that uh, makes them a later summon is you need some demonic blood in order to get them. There it is. Small ritual, medium infernal, large infernal. And I do think I will want the barrier on this one because I think he'll try and run away and he'll be aggro to me until I give him the contract. At which point he will be he will become effectively friendly. So, barrier... Refined Evil, Demonic Blood, Ender Pearl, and a Tombstone. Regular a Tombstone. What? Okay. With at least one witch in your coven. Ah! That makes sense. I needed to summon the girls to do this. Does it say that in the circle magic? No, it doesn't say that in the circle magic. That's interesting. 
So I guess I should just get into the habit of using the Seer Stone for all my rituals, maybe. Eh, maybe not. Anyway. All I need to do to summon the Coven for a ritual is... Isn't it cute? Oh, look at his little janky teeth. Oh, he is energetic. <laughs> yeah, thankfully, it looks like even though they were standing in the barrier, they were perfectly safe. Oh, he's so cutely vicious. If I get in there, he should he should be like he should be trying to kill me. Yeah, he's pretty ineffective at it. Anyway, just hand him the contract. And here, don't call yourself that, man. I mean, hey, prostitution is a perfectly valid life choice, okay? Anyway. I think I am just going to see if I can, like, put him up somewhere, because you see he's running around. Oh, he doesn't accept a lead. That's unfortunate. I'm going to have to make him a little pit. Which is appropriate. There, that should be a sufficient amount of space for him. This Rod of the Shaded Mesa is really paying dividends. I should have probably made it a bit sooner. Come on, little guy. No, no, I know. Into the pit. There we go. Now he won't be going anywhere. So, this little guy, he can share secrets with us, but he demands shinies. No, he's not actually... Excuse me, hiccups. Anyway, shinies. I'm not quite sure what exactly qualifies all as shinies. I know that gold and diamonds and most things. And he differentiates between like gold blocks and gold nuggets. But there are a couple of things that you wouldn't necessarily expect. Like I think he accepts iron as well. Anyway, if we give these to him, he goes, Ooh, shiny. Shiny, 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 shiny. Until he eventually gets bored. Oh, he has secrets to share. Yes. Ooh. I'm not sure what this is exactly useful for. Ah, he's bored of gold. Does he like gold nuggets? Ah, he doesn't consider nuggets to be shiny. Oh, he's bored of gold blocks. Okay, so diamonds. Oh. Maybe he's just bored of shinies for the moment in general. Hmm. Maybe I need to, like, wait a couple of minutes before I flood him with new gifts. Yeah. Or maybe I need to summon a whole new one. And, like... Yeah. Anyway, he can do some pretty interesting things. 
Like, I can make new contracts with him for him to grant me temporary magic. And I would need to look up all of them. Anyway, let's see if the quest book offers any guidance on this. Mm-hmm. Ah, when drunk, each of them will allow you to use a different special gesture with the Mystic Branch. Oh, okay. So if I drink this, maybe that's what that Mystic Branch knowledge was all about. So let me get my Seer Stone. Yeah, let's see here. Nose Carnosa Diem. Okay. Let's look in symbology and see if it lists Carnosa Diem. Ah, ah. Fletchy Feast. Right, right, up, down, down. Okay. Ah, hello. So, right, right, up, down, down. Yep. Well, and by the way, once you complete a symbol, you can aim it, and you don't have to worry about any more symbols. So, zoom. What did that do? Maybe it exchanged health for hunger, but I was already at full hunger, so, like... It sounded cool. I'll, I'll try and get a little bit hungry, and I'll see if it does anything. Let me just run around a little bit. Ah, you should be helpful. There we go. Let's get down to full hunger. I won't die from it because the Ring of Odin protects me from hunger damage as well. Okay, that's probably good enough. Let's see how much this does. Right, right, oop. Right, right, up, down, down. Well, that didn't seem to do anything. Hmm. Huh. Let me go look up what this does. One wiki trip later, apparently what it does is it damages you in order to refill your infusion power on the go, and it also gives you a couple of LP. So that could be a good emergency fix if if I meet another Witch Hunter and they drain my life network again, it would be just enough to get the Well of Suffering going. Maybe that's an excuse to bring the Mystic Branch with me? I mean, it is a pretty decent multi-tool. Like, I don't know, if I look in the Symbology book... Yeah. It has a couple of uses. <laughs> okay, why not? Down, left, down, down, left. No? Oh, down, left, down, down, right. That probably, like, got another witch hunter on my ass. It looks like it did a tiny amount of damage. Lame. Oh god, this is happening again. Yeah, it doesn't, like, do a dot or anything. Maybe something special happens if I kill them with it? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, let's see if that got some more witch hunters after me. That was... I learned my lesson on that one.
Don't have the rod in my hot bar. Maybe they only come at night. No? Looks like no witch hunters. Oh well. Anyway. That's enough goofing around with that nonsense. Mm, full bag. Maybe I could dump... I could dump the flint and steel now, because the mystic branch can shoot a fireball. Well, I don't know if the Mystic Branch can do the Brazier. Well, it's no big deal. And I don't need the Mana Steel Scoop anymore. Uh, maybe the, net the Network Tool can sit in the Network itself. Um, I'm going to keep that just because just I like it. Those drawer keys are used infrequently enough that they can sit in the network. Um, how did that get in there? Don't need the thomostatic harness anymore because I have the potion. Okay, yeah, that clears a bit of space. You know... Fun fact about using filling agents. They don't actually require an orb. I'll keep these in the in the network now. Yeah. So I could take a chemistry set with me. And a bunch of filling agents. And, like, if I need refilling on the potion bottle in the field, I could, like, just do that. Yeah, okay. It's a little bit slot heavy, but I just cleared out a whole ton, so it's kind of justified. And that's not used really frequently anymore. Neither's that. Okay. And actually, since I cleared out some slots, let's put the Seer Stone in there. Okay, a little bit of inventory management done. Let's see if the Imp is recharged yet. Let's offer him some diamonds. But he definitely handed me something. Yes, soul of a fear demon. Well, let's let's keep the chat on so I can see what I learn. So, seer stone. Mors Mordra. Sounds ominous. Conjure the Dark Mark. Up, up, left, right, right. Okay. Huh. 
<laughs> Cute. I can't kill it. Hopefully it just goes away. It's intangible. It's, um... Yeah, that's... That, that's totally just a feature of the base now. <laughs> oh, dear. I imagine that'll go away in five minutes or something. It's already gone. Nope. Okay, the other things we can do with our Flyer Imp while we are waiting on him to recharge yet again. We can get this Contract of Fiery Tolerance. So, first I need to make a new contract. You know, I might as well get these contracts on Autocraft. Because, yeah, I can totally just sell my soul multiple times. I mean, I'm already dealing with demons. Does it matter that I'm scamming them? How bad could it be? Let's get taglock kits on there, too. First need bone needles. Then the tag lock kit itself. Just dunk to get my own blood. Wait, do I need to bind it then do the thing? I don't know. Okay, so let's try that blaze powder. Yeah, it gives fiery tolerance. And I think what this will do is... Once I hand it to the imp, so long as he is happy to me, happy with me, meaning that he is my imp and I have treated him well and given him tons of shinies, then let's see if he says anything. Oops. Then he should be able to cast fire resistance on me. We'll feel his flames, huh? Okay. Okay. What do you think, Skull? Glad to hear it. So, I think that's all we can really do with him for now unless he's recharged again. Let's try a diamond block. Eventually, the Fire Imp can give us the means of summoning a boss. Yeah, I think he's still bored. So, let's... Eh, I think that's a fairly good place to wrap up for the day, but let's do one last thing just for fun. I, I don't think this is going to be a quest, but I'm going to do it anyway just for fun. So I'm going to make some wicker first. That was a crash. That was a really weird crash. So I'm just going to take... The saplings uh, a bit more manually this time. Okay. And then I'm gonna do five of these at a time with some demonic blood. No? Is it the other way around? Yes. So, you just get some blood-infused wicker. Not quite
quite sure how much of it I'd actually need. I think 20 should be more than enough. I think it's 16 that you need. Because we are building a Wicker Man, just like we have over here. And actually, I'm just going to use this guy as a guide. Because, yeah, they do have to be... They all have to be um, in the same direction. Where did you come from? They all have to be in the same uh, formation. So... Oh, that was cute. So yeah, see how it's like that. Let's actually get our flight potion on. Make this a little bit easier to build. And I think then these four would have to go like this. Yeah, that's looking right. Puts this like this. And this like this. And that. Yeah, like that. Okay, and then I think we just need to set it on fire, and hopefully Incendio will work. You know what? I'm not going to risk it. And also, just to make double extra sure, plus this guy has summons. So, you know, don't want to try and cheese the fight any more than I do just by existing. So, yeah. By the hallowed halls of Wrestlemania... I summon you, Broseidon, Lord of the Swole. Look at this guy. Frickin' beautiful. Uh, the laggy AI thing is kind of killing him, though. He should be running after me at full frickin' speed. I have no idea what's causing that. I thought it was a thing with my AMD settings. But I turned all that off and it seemed to fix it, but then it just started up again mid-game. Anyway, the Horned Huntsman. He summons dogs, he does lots of damage. Um, if, if I wasn't immune to knockback, he would toss me up into the air a billion... Oh, that's right. I'm freaking invincible. That's kind of lame. I'm sorry, I should have... I should have, like drink some milk and turn my potion effect off. Still, you can see this isn't really a challenging fight right now because of the AI problem anyway. Oh well, mildly disappointing is the regrowth way. Yep, he drops some pretty cool like uh, enchantment books, he drops a little bit more demonic blood, he drops some wither skulls for some reason. And he has a chance to drop that spear he was wielding, uh, which can, which does good damage, huge knockback, and has a special that allows you to summon your own temporary wolves. They last like 30 seconds, and they are just like vanilla wolves. But you can summon them for free. So, today was just kind of a little advancement in derp episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.